All right, so for the flow of urine, we're gonna start with where urine is made, which is this little claw-shaped thing right here. Um, I'm gonna use the alphabet this time instead of numbering them. So we're gonna start with the letter A. This is called Bowman's capsule. He discovered it, he gets to name it, it's fair. Um, the urine is formed in Bowman's capsule when the water from the blood in the glomerulus, the water is pulled out of the blood and into Bowman's capsule. So I drew a little arrow there. Not only is water pulled out of blood, you also have ions coming out. You have salts, different salts coming out. You have um, some amino acids coming out. You have waste products coming out of your blood, which is excellent because if you have a buildup of waste, you die. So all the stuff that's pulled out starts flowing through the tube. This tube here that's connected to the Bowman's capsule is called the proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal means close to, so it's close to Bowman's capsule, and convoluted means like messy or like not direct, which this nephron is not. So it makes sense. It totally makes sense. And it's a tube. The urine flows through the uh, proximal convoluted tubule and it zigzags back and forth. And it's crazy that every single nephron is pretty much similar in structure. Every single one of those two millions that you have. At some point in the uh, tubule, you have this part where you have a little loop. The urine goes down the loop, and the part where the loop goes downward is called your descending limb. So I'm going to label that the letter C. And then urine will go up the loop, and the part of the loop that goes upward is called the ascending limb. How'd you know? And then the urine continues to flow all the way throughout. And as we get farther away from the ascending limb, this portion of the tubule is now called the distal convoluted tubule. Since it's distal, it's a little bit farther away from the Bowman's capsule. And all of the distal convoluted tubules of the nephrons, out of all the nephrons, they all collect together and their urine will actually flow into... Oh, sorry, that's the letter F. The urine flows into uh, this part of the tube known as the collecting duct. All of the collecting ducts of all of the nephrons will send the urine to the renal pyramids. These two are supposed to be attached, but as you can see in the picture, they're not attached. So we're going to draw a line over here to make it look like the collecting duct is attached to the renal pyramid. which is going to be letter G. So the urine goes from the collecting duct to uh, the renal pyramid. The renal pyramids are just a series of tubes arranged in a pyramid shape. The urine goes into the renal pyramid, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. It has to pass the renal papillae, which empties the urine into the minor calyx. Yeah, that's the letter G. Brought to you by, just kidding. Um, and the minor calyces empty into the major calyces. The major calyces merge together to form the renal pelvis. Oops, I missed the letter. That's a J. The major calyx was supposed to be the letter J. The renal pelvis was the letter K. And then the renal pelvis empties the urine into the ureter. 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 Okay. Um, the a ascending limb does move urine via the peristalsis. Oh. It's always been there for you, Johnny. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Letter A. <laughs> the 
Bowman discovered it. He gets to name it after himself. It's also <coughs> called the glomerulus capsule. It's kind of like a cap that surrounds a glomerulus. I'm going to add a little note for glomerular capsule. This is where substances are extracted from blood. I'll specify those substances later. Where substances are extracted. from blood and this is actually the first step in forming urine so I'm gonna write first step of micturition after the substances are removed from the blood that urine will now drain out of the Bowman's capsule through to the letter B which is the proximal convoluted tubule. The proximal convoluted tubule will zigzag back and forth and it'll have a portion where it goes downward into the loop of Henle. Oops, spoilers. Do the de descending limb. And then after urine goes down the descending limb, it'll come back up the ascending limb. And in the proximal convoluted tubule and around the descending limb and parts of the ascending limb, that's where we have the second step of micturition. Step two. And urine will continue to flow along through letter E which is our distal convoluted tubule. And ascending limb slash distal convoluted tubule is kind of where step three will occur. For urine formation. And then the urine will flow through the collecting ducts. I'm going to add a little note. The collecting ducts actually collect urine from multiple nephrons. So if our diagram were to be more accurate, we would have more than one nephron attached to that collecting duct. Once all three steps of micturition have occurred, now the urine can start leaving the kidneys. So we're going to list the letter G, which is the renal pyramids. Where the renal pyramids end, we have the letter H, which is the renal papillae. Past the renal papilla, we have the letter I, which is the minor calyx. The minor calyx is merged to form the major calyx. The uh, renal pyramid, renal papilla, minor calyx, major calyx, those are all just tubes in the kidney that urine will flow through. Once done, the urine is done flowing through those tubes, it will enter into the pouch known as the renal pelvis. So I'm just going to add a little note. That's just a pouch. And then the renal pelvis is attached to the ureter. Oops. Renal pelvis. No, that was right. Your reader, 
which will empty into the bladder, which will empty into the urethra, which will empty into where? The toilet. <laughs> or diaper. But hopefully not the last one. Okay. All right. So below you should have a little bit of space um, for the three steps of micturition. If you don't have space below, you can write it on the back. Um, so I'm actually going to fold.